lot of people don't want to go pro. Most people just want an iPad. An iPad that does iPad stuff. An iPad capable of note-taking, surfing the web, gaming, and most importantly, an iPad that doesn't break the bank. And this is why the iPad 9th gen exists, renovated in 2021 with a couple new features that you love. So this is my review and my student's perspective on the iPad 9th gen. Okay, let me tell you straight off. This iPad is great. It's great in value, like it's probably the best Apple products in terms of value, and well, it's cheap. It's great at doing so many things. It's a great tool for gaming, note-taking, illustrating, surfing the web, etc. So many people are always confused on whether you should buy a MacBook or an iPad. I'll tell you at the end of the video which one I prefer, but as of now, the only thing that you have to know is that this guy is great. It's got 10.2 inches, so it's quite a large display, which means it's perfect for multitasking. So if you're a student, you're gonna have your essays on the right, or maybe you're researching a document on the right, and then on the left part of the display, you're gonna be able to take notes. Or maybe you're watching a movie while you're doing homework, which is something that you shouldn't do. Don't watch movies while you do homework. Seriously. One thing to note, one thing that I don't like about this iPad, but I can't really complain because of the price. I mean, this thing has such a good value is the display. The display doesn't have a laminated display. So there's a gap between the glass and the display. You have to see it in person for you to understand. It's fine. You get used to it. But me, since I'm coming from like an iPad Pro 12.9 inch M1, the most expensive iPad, once I look at this, it's like, wow, I can really feel it. But it's fine. And definitely for the price, I can't complain. The display itself though looks incredible. So if you're watching movies after your homework, I mean, it's gonna look incredible. And it's actually got True Tone for the first time, which is awesome. And this is a big deal, especially for the price tag. True Tone basically adapts to the lighting of your room or if you're outdoors or if you're indoors. So if you're like in a library that has like a more cold light, well, the screen will automatically adapt to the lighting of your room. Maybe you're in this room, which is kind of more warm. The display will go warm. It's not gonna turn orange. It's simply going to adapt to the lighting of your room. Now, this is extremely useful for students because students were always studying, students are always writing essays, students are always on their iPad, students are always looking at the screen. So if you're looking all the time at a screen, it's not the best. So it's very important for your display have True Tone. I mean, I can't imagine a world without True Tone to be honest because I'm spending you know my entire day looking at screens and it's great that the screen automatically adapts to light. So iPad 9th gen with True Tone, Apple, this is good stuff. The design of this iPad is probably one of its weakest points. I mean, it's an absolute stunning design, but well, it's a design that we've been seeing for ages and ages and ages. It's an iPad design. It's got huge bezels on the top and on the bottom of the display. The back is made out of 100% aluminum. I mean, no hate on the design because the design looks stunning. It comes in two colors, space gray and silver, and this space gray looks absolutely stunning. All I'm saying is that the design feels kind of outdated, but it looks great. We've got Touch ID instead of Face ID, which I mean, in an era that we're wearing face masks all day, in an era that if you go into a classroom, you have to do it like this to, you know, if you're having face ID, you have to constantly pull down your face mask. So in terms of 2021, Touch ID is actually a better way to go in terms of students. So this iPad is literally ready for 2021 and now 2022. Now something new and something great is the cameras. The cameras have been heavily improved on the iPad 9th gen. The quality itself is, well, an iPad 9th gen quality. It's not the craziest quality, but nobody really takes photos on their iPad. Something that is extremely useful is taking photos of your homework, scanning documents, and then, you know, you've got the Apple Pencil, which we're gonna talk about in just a second. So you can highlight, you can mark up stuff. So that sort of stuff is extremely useful. But where it gets really interesting and something that I was actually mind blown when Apple actually released it at the Apple event is center stage. Yes, the cheapest iPad now has center stage. If you don't know what center stage is, it's basically a very immersive way for you to do FaceTime. The camera is basically very ultra wide, so the camera will literally follow you around your room. So that's awesome, that's awesome stuff. So let's say, you know, you're showing this to somebody. Hey, look at this. And then you go up and then you're like, look at this, look at this. And then you're here and then you're here. It's super useful stuff, seriously. If you haven't tried out center stage, it's awesome. And it's something that I really want to come on the iPhones. The iPhone 13s don't have it and the iPad 9th gen has it. So it's kind of crazy that this has it. I'm so happy. I mean, seriously, center stage is my favorite feature on this year's iPad. It's so fun. It's seriously so fun. Okay, I'll stop talking about center stage. I think that's enough. <laughs> Probably the biggest change of the budget iPad year after year 
is the processor. We've got the A13 Bionic chip, which is the same processor as the iPhone 11 for you to get a little bit of reference. A13 is great to have on this iPad. It will basically handle mostly anything that you want to do in your student related life. So any keynote presentations will be great. Any gaming will do great actually. I've actually started gaming some Apple Arcade on this iPad and I haven't really noticed any lag. Like nowadays, all chips that Apple makes are honestly beast. Yes, the M1 iPad Pro is so much faster is an absolute beast. But I mean, if you want me to be honest, the M1 iPad Pro can be so much faster, but nobody really uses that much power. So the A13 Bionic on the iPad will do great. There is the line between dreaming. Now, accessories. Let's talk about accessories because accessories is something that I'm kind of annoyed at Apple this year because I really thought Apple was going to get rid of the Apple Pencil first generation. They didn't. Okay, what accessories do we get on the iPad 9 Gen? Well, there's two main accessories that you have to know about. Firstly, and most importantly, the Apple Pencil, but it's the first generation Apple Pencil, which has the lid that you lose all the time. It's got the design that you charge it by simply snapping it, which yes, it feels like a lightsaber, which is very annoying, but Overall, either way, the Apple Pencil is great. It doesn't matter if it's the second generation Apple Pencil or if it's the first generation Apple Pencil, which by the way, this is a fun fact. I don't think I've ever said this on a video, but I actually prefer the design, not the usability, but the design, the aesthetic overall of the first generation Apple Pencil. I prefer it much better than the second generation. I feel like it's so beautiful. This stainless steel on the top absolutely looks. But anyways, Apple Pencil first generation will do great at note taking, for example. I mean, if you're a student and you don't have an iPad and you've never had an iPad in your life, you're gonna love it. Seriously, like it's such a great experience to have your iPad and an Apple Pencil at the classroom. You've got so many apps that are perfect for students. Notability is my personal favorite for taking notes. You've got so many tools. You can literally record a class. You can literally highlight, you can write, you can mark up stuff, you can take photos, put it in your um, notability file, and then you can mark up stuff, you can write stuff down. Like I took so many notes in college, so, so many with my Apple Pencil, and I absolutely loved it. It's got a great battery life and you simply charge it like for one minute, you've got, you know, a bunch, a bunch of hours of battery life. I mean, yes, charging it is extremely annoying to put it in, but it's so fast. Like there's so much fast charging in this. So if you just plug it in for a couple of minutes, you're, you're going to have a bunch of time to actually write things down. So Apple Pencil, I'd say is a must have for most students. Something else that I consider a must have is the smart keyboard. Well, if you don't know, the actual iPad has a smart connector which you basically attach it to a keyboard, for example. So you don't need Bluetooth. You don't need to connect the keyboard. The keyboard automatically connect by itself to the iPad. So that's the most powerful thing about this keyboard is that you don't have to connect it. You simply snap it and start typing away. The actual keyboard is great. I actually really, really like it. A lot of people don't like the typing experience. What can you do if you're indecisive? Go to an Apple store, go to your nearest tech store, try it out. If you like it, go ahead. But I'd say give it a try. And I absolutely loved it once I got used to it. Yes, the keys don't have like a lot of travel, but I absolutely typed so fast with this keyboard and I loved it. And there's, you know, it's a case, it's, it's a folio case. Whenever you like pull it up, the screen will go on and go off. So no battery with this keyboard. It's a little bit expensive, but I'd say it's totally worth it. And with this and this, you've actually got a great, awesome budget option, which by the way, if you want other budget options, like in terms of keyboards and styluses, there's a bunch of options for you. Let me show you actually, I've actually got a couple of them. These are not sponsored, but they're great. I used them in college and I just want to show you. Okay, hold on. Okay, look, I got some accessories that I wanted to show you. Okay, let's start off with the mouse. You can actually connect a mouse to your iPad and I totally recommend it if you're a student, especially if you're writing a lot of essays. There's a bunch of budget options. These are actually quite affordable. This Logitech Pebble is one that I really, really use. It's really slim, so you can just throw it in your backpack. Battery life is great. And then this Satechi one is also great. You've got a USB-C port on the front. This one comes in black and I think it looks stunning. And this white one is super minimal. So these are the mouse that I use. Once again, this is not sponsored whatsoever. Um, a great option for an Apple Pencil alternative is this Logitech Crayon. It's 50 bucks and it does the exact same thing as the Apple Pencil, except the Logitech Crayon does not have pressure sensitivity. So with the Apple Pencil, if you actually write harder on the screen, you're actually gonna see the pencil 
being written harder. So Lacha Tech Crane doesn't have that. So if you don't really care on having like a natural typing experience, I definitely recommend this guy. And then last but definitely not least, is this keyboard. Now this is a very weird keyboard, but I totally recommend it because here's the thing with an iPad, especially in your student life. The thing is that you don't always write stuff down with your iPad. So you don't always need a keyboard on the go. And even though this thing is very thin, once you put it on your iPad, it's still thin, but it's a little bit chunkier. So the cool thing on having like a keyboard that's this thin is that you can simply throw it in your backpack. So whenever you need to type it in, you throw it out. And you've also got this little stand. So you put your iPad just like that. So you can actually start typing away. Whatever you want. There's like a keyboard for everything. There's an accessory for everything. I'll link these accessories down below. Once again, these are not sponsored, but I just wanted to show you them because I truly actually use these guys for quite a long time. If you're a student, you only wanna look at two things when purchasing a tablet. One is having a great app store and two, having a great software. And the iPad, that's why it's so great. The software simply runs so incredibly smooth, especially with a great processor, but the iPad OS that it has, it's so great and so useful for students. And then the second thing I was telling you is having a great app store. And on the app store, on the iPad, there are unlimited apps for education. I've actually made a best iPad Pro apps for students. So I definitely encourage you guys to check that out. I'll link it down below. I go over like my top 10 favorite student iPad apps. Definitely check it out. Another link that I'm actually gonna link down below in the description is NordVPN. Now, if you're a student, you're actually gonna go to a library. You're gonna go to a coffee shop. You're gonna sign in. You're gonna log in into so many Wi-Fi. Let me tell you, if you don't know, but actually accessing so many random Wi-Fi is not a good thing for your iPad. It's not a good thing for your safety. Because let me tell you, there's a bunch of bad people out there on the internet trying to steal your information. So with NordVPN, you're literally inside of a bubble, so nobody can access your private information. I totally encourage you for you to check it out because if you don't like it, you've actually got a 30 day money guarantee. So try it out. If you don't like it, they'll give you your money back. But trust me, you know, you're gonna like it. You can have six simultaneous connection and it actually works with iOS, Android, Mac OS, Windows, and it goes on. NordVPN has super fast servers over 5,560 countries. And you can actually unlock Netflix and other streaming services so you can watch all the shows available worldwide. And it even works on China. You know it's serious when you can actually access it even in China. Go to nordvpn.com slash nickiesmolina to get a two-year plan plus four additional months with a huge discount. Links down below in the description. Try it out. If you don't like it, they'll give you your money back. But once again, trust me, you're not going to want your money back. Okay, the moment. The question that you guys are always asking me. I'm, I, I always get so annoyed because I always make every single year a video, a MacBook versus iPad video, and it gets so many views, but every single video that I make an iPad related video, there's always comments saying MacBook or iPad. So before you comment that, I'll tell you my opinion on whether you should get a MacBook or an iPad for student, especially the budget iPad or a budget MacBook Air, for example. Here's my opinion. I always say the same thing, an iPad can do this, and it can do this. And a MacBook can only do this. What I mean by this is that an iPad can be a tablet when you need it and a laptop when you need it. So you've got the keyboard, you can use it without a keyboard. So you've got a tablet like experience. You can watch movies on the go. You can note take with your Apple Pencil on the go. And then a MacBook, I'd say it's a more serious device. It's, there's nothing wrong with a MacBook. I use a MacBook every single day. It's actually right here. I love it, but it's just a more serious way to do your work. And with your iPad, it's just more fun. And there's actually a bunch more reasons on why an iPad is better. Mainly for accessories, as I was telling you, the MacBook doesn't have an Apple Pencil. So if you're a student, you won't be able to note take handwritten notes, take photos of your board, take photos of your homework on the go. And that's seriously super useful stuff. A MacBook, yes, you can take photos with your iPhone and then airdrop them and then put them on a document. But it's not the same as literally having a camera and then snapping it on the go. I'm just saying. That's why I prefer an iPad instead of a Mac for students. But here's the thing, be careful. Be careful with your iPad depending on what you study. For example, me, I studied graphic design and I loved using my iPad for sketching. I loved it for note-taking, but for colleges, for most universities, for most degrees, you're gonna need certain programs that are only available in your Mac. So if you're going into college this year, if you're going into a degree, maybe you're going into high school, make sure to ask, hey, are there any programs that I need on my Mac? Are they available on the iPad? If they say no, 
you're gonna, not gonna have a choice. You're gonna have to stick with a Mac, which is not a bad option at all. I'm just saying, if you can't go for an iPad for students, that's what I always recommend. There's a bunch of opinions out there. You came here to listen to my opinion, and I told you. So thanks for watching. Be happy because life is good. Subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.